If you are looking to come to Portugal and get a holiday rental VRBO or Airbnb style, or looking to invest in a property and do that as short-term rental, those days may be numbered. Hey again, it's Jorik. Welcome back to Portugal and Beyond. I hope you're having a great day. This is a more serious video uh, because I want to make sure that many of you who have mentioned you're coming to check out Portugal, you're just going to do it for a holiday. You're not going to move here. You just want to check out some of the sites throughout Portugal. But some of you are looking to potentially move here either on a permanent basis or schedule a, a vacation trip, check the places out and then go back or you may invest in a property here, but rent it out when you're not living here. The Supreme Court here in Portugal just made an announcement yesterday that rental properties are short-term rental properties are no longer going to be rented out to tourists, meaning people that own apartments uh, in residential uh, buildings are no longer going to be able to do essentially VRBO, Airbnb, and whatever concepts are out there to be able to do short-term rentals for tourists. I'm showing you the article. I will put a link uh, uh, to this article in the description. I'll also make a pinned comment. And the reason I wanted to make this video, I didn't plan on it, is because several of you, when you do come, I have friends that are in Spain right now, but they were in Portugal last week, they used one of these rental accommodations, uh, somebody's Airbnb, to set up shop in Lisbon for a few days. Well, based upon this ruling, that place, that apartment can no longer do it. And it's effective immediately. So I, it's something that if you are planning a trip, you already have a trip planned anywhere in Portugal, and you're using a short term, so you're staying a few days at this apartment, a few days at that flat, I highly recommend that you contact the owners of that property through VRBO, Airbnb, or whatever other site. Those are the two I'm, I'm routinely aware of. And make sure that the property is still available and that they're not going to rescind your stay, meaning refund whatever money is owed to you because the Supreme Court is saying here, those are no longer eligible uh, to be rented out to tourists. So meaning you have to be there long term. And when I'm saying long term, three months, six months, a year, there's a few things that I want to talk about with this. First, the one question that you may ask is how are they going to be able to enforce it? I don't know. And realistically, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to actually reinforce it other than maybe take licenses away from people that are renting, that they find are renting out their places to tourists. Um, maybe somehow they're going to restrict the usage of Airbnb and VRBO websites in Portugal. I, I don't know. Logistically, it seems like this is going to be a nightmare for Portugal. Um, but for tourists, there aren't a lot of hotel accommodations in Lisbon, Porto, the Algarve, even though there's a fair amount of hotels on the, in the Azores, more people are using these types of short-term accommodations to stay and move around in Portugal and in every other country. So this ruling was kind of a blindside to many of the people that own these properties. And it's not just um, it's locals that have rented out their property, but it's people that are expats or immigrants. You spend six months here, you spend six months abroad, or you live here and you maybe two months out of the year, you go on vacation and you want to rent out your flat for those one or two months. By this law, you are no longer eligible to do that. So the how they're going to enforce this is to be determined if they talk about that. I will do a video about it. But the other piece of this is many of you are looking for investment property, meaning you're going to buy a property here to live in, but then you're also looking at a secondary property to be able to rent out and use that as income. Or... Along with that, 
you're going to buy a place here, but you're not going to be here all the time. You will be that seasonal traveler that you're going to travel throughout Europe, go back home to whether it be the UK, Canada, the US. And while you're gone, you'd like to have a management company kind of maybe handle your affairs. And either you do things on the VRBO and Airbnb, or you have a management company uh, work to rent out your property. All that's now up in the air. So it's something that if you're looking to invest, but not stay in the property, some of that's gonna be in jeopardy here unless you are willing to do long-term rentals. And when I say long-term rentals, I mean specifically six month leases and up, year or longer leases. The things where you're gonna be able to rent out for one, two, three, four, or five nights that may be a thing of the past. It may force people to use hotels. The hotel industry is probably happy about this because this means that more people will have to use hotel space to stay in Portugal as opposed to Airbnb and VRBOs. What's surprising to me is so many rural towns, many people like to get out of Lisbon, Porto, into smaller communities to go see authentic Portugal to go for a hike, to go cycling, to check out the mountains, things of that nature. Many of these towns don't have any hotels. So the only way you're staying in some of these small towns is by doing the short-term accommodation, the VRBO and the Airbnb. So it seems like a quagmire that um, the Supreme Court here in Portugal has just uh, ruled on, but they ruled on unanimously so it seems like these are pretty serious about it. So the people that are interested in getting rid of the short-term rentals specifically for tourists um, are serious. Just don't know how it's going to actually unfold. But I want to make sure that you're aware of it. We have uh, uh, short-term accommodations in the Algarve next month. We need to check and see if we can or cannot use it. I will let you know the difficulty is we're residents, so we're not technically tourists. So we should be able to use the property without any issue and rent it. But those of you that are tourists that are doing this, which many people do, a high percentage of tourists from any country are using something other than hotels for your accommodations. If you have something booked, check with that company to make sure it's still okay or you may be receiving communication from them shortly saying, hey, we can no longer do this. Here's your money. You have to find a secondary option. So please do your due diligence when you're looking to travel here in Portugal. Things just got a little weird with uh, we've got some great news. No longer have to wear masks. So that's awesome. Uh, but the downside when you're in and traveling around Portugal is this new uh, outlawing of the short term accommodations. We'll see what happens. A few years ago, several parishes or districts within Lisbon um, stopped allowing these short-term rentals to be uh, in, in place. And it was more to keep gentrification from happening, more to keep Portuguese locals in the city center. But now this is all of Portugal, so I'm not sure how this will impact other than people may decide to go travel to other places. But first things first, if you have a VRBO, VRBO or Airbnb, check with the owners to make sure that that's still a good reservation for at least a few more, uh, the April, May, June, unless this goes back into the courts or there's some lawsuits filed. So again, not a great uh, message to be sending today, but I wanna make sure that you have the latest on what's going on if you're traveling or looking to invest in Portugal. I wanna make sure you know what's happening. So as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and enjoy your travels. Hey, thanks so much for watching the full video. If you get a chance, and if you're interested in reading some crazy workplace stories, please check out my two books, Magnet of Badness, Volume 1 and Volume 2, both available on Amazon in ebook or softcover. If you want to make fun of me, there's plenty of stories where you can do that. If you want to make yourself feel better about the job that you're in, It'll make you feel better too. But uh, crazy stuff that happened over 30 years, you won't believe it until you read it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you get a chance, pick up a copy of one of these on Amazon. Thank you so much.